we we are 1942. This is the Second World War. Uh, <laughs> um, and um, the objective is uh, um, to save to save the injured. This is the injured. <laughs> the injured is a robot, and uh, with the robot, uh, um, we uh, save the injured. Uh, we uh, cross the battlefield and uh, um, we bring them and bring them to the, the, to the hospital. Okay, to the hospital. Uh, we have four robots. Four robots. So that's the first robot. So we have one robot that takes the injured. <coughs> it passes it to a, some sort of tank robot, which delivers it to the other one that delivers it to the hospital. Which is that thing over there, right? Okay. So this this robot was built in I think uh, two days. I mean six hours because each class is three hours, and it's it's not uh, easy to build a robot. I mean the problem with Lego is to make a very compact design. Uh, usually, uh, you know these motors are very big. So he started building this, uh, and uh, I was very impressed. The, the motors were powered. I thought, well, if you turn them you will be able to make a much narrower robot, but it will be a little bit more complicated and tricky to program. Because as he was saying, uh, to make the robot go forward, you, you, make, uh, you need to make one motor to go forward, the other motor to go backwards, right? The other thing is that to turn a tank, uh, one, uh, what do you call that? Uh, one, uh, one wheel, it's not a wheel. Track. Track. One track has to go forward, the other one backwards. So it has to turn over the axis. Right. The other thing, this one will follow the line with two sensors, and it's very appropriate to, to climb a ramp. Right. Those other robots can't do it because they, uh, they sleep there. Right. So this one just has this mechanism to, to deliver the ball. And it uses an ultrasonic sensor to detect when the ball, uh, when it has the ball. Right. The third robot. Yes. And this is the robot that at the end we've got some problems that we, we need to put this ultrasonic sensor because there it doesn't work. So we put it here and, and now I think that probably works. <laughs> okay, but the difference, see the, this robot, the, the, the basic structure of the robot is the, the, the robot we've used in the course. So it's very similar to that one, but it follows the line with two light sensors. And the mechanism to, to, uh, to deliver the ball is different from the other one. Right? So as he was saying, we, this, this gave us a lot of problems. What is interesting is every student, each student builds a, a different robot, and they have to negotiate between themselves to see how the robots interact and pass the ball to each other. Okay. This is the first robot. Okay, Okay. <laughs> um, at the start, he opens uh, his hand. Uh, his he friend. He's uh, opening his hand, and uh, he uh, starts the the block. Okay. Oh, the robot follows the line until yes. it sees the ball. How does it do that? Well. Uh, uh, it does it, it gets out of the loop when the ultrasonic sensor sees the ball. Right? Okay. Then, what does it do? Um, he, uh, with this program... Uh, it turns around, right? Yes. <laughs> okay, how does it turn around? Just what we saw before. It, uh, it turns uh, one motor forward, the other one backwards, right? Then, what does it do? Uh, it does it. Uh, he turns around and um, he takes ball uh, with the motor A. Very good, right? It uses the third. I mean, we, we didn't tell you that, but the uh, the intelligent brick has three ports uh, for three motors and four ports for four sensors. 
right? So we use two ports to uh, uh, move the robot and one port for the third uh, for the third motor, which is in this case takes the ball, right? Then. Um, and uh, he. Okay, right. Here, follows the line until it sees the wall, right? Uh, that that robot has uh, two ultra uh, ultrasonic sensors. The first one in front is used to see the ball, right? But the second one on the side, it, it uses it to see the to follow the wall. Because here there is a gap, right? So what it's basically doing is uh, it follows the line until it sees the wall. When it sees the wall, it follows the wall until what? Until it sees the tank. <laughs> <laughs> until there is no wall. Look, there's no wall. So when there is no wall, it has to continue following the, the line until it sees the tank, right? See, this is port two and this is port four. Too much playing in class. Okay, good. Let's let's continue. Then um, it stops uh, when, it's the when, uh, when he detect, uh, yes, when he detect um, the tank, he. He uh, turns around and uh, he delivers home. Very good. And? And uh, he passion. Uh, well, he's, he waits five seconds and, but? And uh, he reset. Okay, very good. It, it starts again because this is an, an uh, endless loop, right? So the robot will always do that, right? But now, let's explain what how the robot follows the line. How does the robot follow the line? Um, when uh, he detects uh, when he detects um, a black, uh, black light, he turns uh, for detect uh, a white light. Yeah. And uh, when so when he sees white, and when uh, he detects a white white light, yeah. um, he detects uh, again uh, with uh, a, a different light intensity. Yes. So basically, this is a, a light follower with one sensor, a three-step light follower with one sensor. That's the way it's called. Right. So basically, we are using different light intensities, the reflected light. So this is really black, and between 38 and 52, it means gray, right? So when it sees gray, it goes forward, and when, when it sees white, it turns. So it's a, it's a, it's a little bit, a bit more sophisticated algorithm. And uh, here... Uh, what does it do here? Here? The same thing? With ultrasonic sensor, right? Okay. So here we have, if it sees a distance uh, bigger than 15, it turns, but if it's uh, uh, between 15 and 16, it goes forward and it goes to the other, the other side. Okay? With robot 2, this is the tank. Uh, wait, the robot 2 is the tank. Uh, when it detects the ball, it's going to um, turn and go and go and to the ground and and follow the line. Very good. Uh, and cross the beat. And then and, uh, until and. So we follow the line, crosses the bridge, continue following the line, and until... He, he detects the two sensor, detects a black, oops, a black light, and then he 
it uh, raise the arm and yeah. pass the ball to the third row. Okay, then, very good. Yeah. So, well, then he passes the ball, the ball, the lead the ball, turns around. And follow the line again. Again and cross the grid until the first no. Then it stops when it detects um, two black lines and then wait to the first robot pass pass the ball. Pass the ball. Okay. And then, what does it do when it finishes here? All the time, the same thing. Okay. I think. Same thing. Okay. So now, no. who does the tank follow the line? Mm. Uh, when it detects black. Okay, but wait. Instead of using one light sensor, it uses two light sensors. Right? sensors detect black, what does it do? What is this? An interception. Very good. So when the robot reaches an intersection, it means that the two light sensors see black. Right? So in that case, it doesn't stop. It goes forward. But it does another thing that we will explain later. When one sees black and the other white, what would the robot do? Turn one side. Uh, when, the other sees, when one sees black, uh, white and the other black, what does it do? Turn the opposite side, right? And with the two C white, what should the robot do? Go forward. So, uh, uh, I mean, the, as uh, we explained before, since one robot is uh, uh, built in one direction and the other one is reversed, you know, uh, it's a little bit tricky because uh, the robot turns when the two uh, motors turn the same direction. Okay? So, uh, what happens here when the robot is on top of the bridge? Um, the light sensor mm -hmm. uh, in very in a very, very high in very relation high. to the ground, right? Then doesn't detect anything. No, it detects something. It always detects something. Mm -hmm. uh, it detects. Um, the, the, with the two sensor, black line. Yeah, it detects like if it uh, was a black line. Actually, if there is nothing underneath, it's like if, if there were black, right? So what do you do to solve this, to, to solve this problem? You no, know, what do we do? Before we, en we enter the light following algorithm, we, put, uh, we set a variable to false, right? Mm -hmm. And we, we're looping until this variable is true, right? So, if the two sensors see the black line, we set the variable to true. So when it gets here, it gets out of the loop. Okay? Okay. Now, try this one. Excuse me, somebody said as well. Um, there's actually a choir rehearsal in the Yeah. <laughs> just so you know. Okay, yeah. So let's. Well, this is the strategy to, to jump over the bridge. You're right. It's very late. So. When the robot goes forward, and when when uh, when it, it keeps going forward, but when it uh, comes down, uh, as soon as one of the two light sensors see white, it knows it's already going down, right? Okay, last robot, robot three. Okay, basically it's very similar. What goes until it sees the ball, turns around, uh, um, follows the line until the delivery point. It uses the same strategy as before, but with two uh, light sensors, right? And I'm oh, sorry. And uh, that's basically uh, raises the container with port A, turns around, and follows the, the, the line uh, uh, again until uh, uh, reaches the, the meeting point with robot two. And this is uh, done immediately. Okay, let's do the demo. <coughs> 